Hi there, everybody. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Pat Tomasulo Podcast. Pat Tomo, Pat Tomo, Pat Tomasulo, baby. This is the podcast where Pat Tomasulo talks for roughly an hour, and producer James in an undisclosed bunker somewhere else far removed from me produces and chimes in and laughs and delights all of you james how are you doing i'm good man doing very you're good good. how are you you know i think this week i may need you to put up just a quick shot of you so that people can see what don't well don't don't be upset you're wearing glasses i'm wearing glasses yes i am and to my knowledge your eyesight is fine it's yeah okay so explain to me why you're wearing glasses. Well, uh, as you well know and just explained to the audience, uh, I am a producer, so I spend a lot of time in front of a screen. Yeah. And uh, according to some people, screens produce what is called blue light. Who are light. some people? Bloggers? Uh, you know, People who sell doctors, blue blocking sunglasses? Uh, people who go to school and, and get degrees for hundreds of thousands of dollars, they say All that right. uh, blue light... Uh, emits from screens, the same kind of light that comes from the sun, ultraviolet and blue light, and that's bad for you at mm-hmm. night and continuously through the day. So I yeah. wear blue light blocking glasses so sure. that I can protect myself. Let from... me ask you, how old are you? I am old, 35. You're fighting a losing battle. Okay. You, you, <laughs> what are you going to do with your eyes? Your eyes are they are only going one direction. I'm You're not to slowing slow it that down. Battle down okay. though. I'm trying but right to... now you're, but right now your eyesight is fine. And you're wearing glasses. Now, to someone like me, who yeah. has to wear glasses so that he can see straight, right. it's kind of insulting. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, what's next? You're going to start wearing hearing aid? I, even though even though you hear fine, you're just going to walk around with a cochlear implant? <laughs> just because you like the way it looks? I, I don't understand this. I don't understand. Okay, you have... As as cockamamie a reason as this is, you like that word? That's a dad That's word a right word, there. Yeah. My father used it's a good word to say. Oh, yeah. As much as your logic to me is absurd, and I don't you know, I, I see this. You know, you know who comes up with these studies? The people who sell those ultralight, ultraviolet light blocking glasses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But okay, at least you have a reason. Mm-hmm. These people who wear fashionable glasses with no problems with their eyes, I want to throw bleach at them <laughs> next time I see them. <laughs> It's not going to walk around. I mean, how how is it okay just to feign not ha- to, to to pretend that you have eye troubles and you're wearing glasses? You know, it's the same thing. What's the difference between that and walking around with with a, with a fake he- with a miracle ear? What is the difference? What is the difference? All of a sudden, you're going to be you're going to be tooling around the neighborhood in a rascal scooter next. Like, oh, do you have a neuropathy in your leg? Nope. I just think this is a cool way to get around. <laughs> you recovering from a surgery? Nope. Nope. I'm just appropriating your physical disability aid. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Walking around with glasses. It's not right. It's not right. I don't like it one bit. I was at the uh, park today with the dog. And there's a... Uh, there's a, a BMX trail next to the yeah. next to the park where I go, Clark Park. I think you know that park. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm playing with the dog, and I see out of the corner of my eye, entering the BMX area of the park, is a guy on a unicycle, just a <laughs> random guy, just on a 11:30 a.m. on a Tuesday, just strolling through, grown ass man, 38 years old. On a unicycle. Just, just that's his mode of transportation. <laughs> just two wheels, not good enough for this guy. He's like, and he's he's barely balancing. He's go, you know, he's going back and forth because he's trying to maintain some semblance of balance. Right. All by himself. Yeah, that's not off-putting at all. Bunch of kids in the in the BMX park, nine and ten year olds, and some 38-year-old guy just comes awkwardly pedaling in on a unicycle. That's a good look. That's a good look. You think he was meeting anybody there? You think he was like, hey, hey, meet me at the at the BMX park. How will I know it's you? I'll be the one on the unicycle. It won't be hard to find me. 
I must have sat I must have sat there for 20 minutes watching this guy just hoping he would fall and it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> These hipsters. It's like you ever see the guys who go around in those like big wheel bicycles, the one with the seat yeah. like 8 feet up in the air Wicker park. and they're just they're go- they're yeah, they're going like in, in like a triple intersection just flying through on this 1920s bike. Yeah. It's like I don't want them to get hit, but at the same time, if they if they do get hit, that's not what you're looking out for. If I'm driving, I'm looking for a, a bike at eye level, somebody coming through. I'm not if I don't see the guy at eye level, I can't be expected to see a guy who's sitting eight feet in the air on a bicycle. <laughs> what is what is what is the reason for that? Why do they do it? Do you know? I bet you you know a lot of hipsters. You hang around with a lot of these young comedians. Why do they Why do they ride these motorcycle or these uh, bicycles I, that I, seat them eight feet in the air? I mean, I would assume for attention. So people will look at them. Yeah. <laughs> is it because they they want to increase the severity of the head injury when they go <laughs> flying off their bike? They're like, you know, being at ground level, that's not going to produce enough blunt force trauma. Let me put myself eight feet in the air. With a seven foot long bike chain. Let's let's throw let's throw another obstacle in there. Guy on a unicycle. I'm like What are you in Ringling Brothers? What do you no, you don't just recreationally unicycle. That's not allowed. Unless you're in a variety show, you're the comic relief in a burlesque act. I, you shouldn't be on a you should, if, if, if you own your own fair trade coffee shop, maybe. But other than that, and I was having a good week. I was having a good week. Nothing had really, you know, aside from my daily general annoyances, nothing had really pushed me over the edge until I saw this guy. And again, this is a me thing. He's probably a fairly nice fella. Probably doesn't think that going out there on a unicycle is going to incite rage in some random guy in the park with his dog. You know, it's a me thing, but it's like some days I ask God, I'm like, why, why do you test me so? You know what's going to get me. I mean, on the, on, on the week after Easter, you know, the week we're celebrating the, the, what, uh, that, what happened? He rose from the dead. <laughs> we're celebrating that. <laughs> It's a holy, it's a holy week still. It's a holy two week period. And you're going to put this guy in my path, have me thinking all sorts of sinful, murderous thoughts. <laughs> it, you know, the Bible says God will not tempt you beyond that which you cannot bear. But I am starting to question that with every grown man on a unicycle I see. You can't just put a guy on a unicycle in my path and expect me not to react. Although I should say there was something on Easter that I saw that really gave me some pause. It was either Saturday or Sunday. Which day was it nicer out? Easter was pretty nice, right? It's, yeah, Sunday. Yeah. And I'm thinking about this because, you know, we're, we're building the house and we're going to be moving into a house soon. And we're driving down this, this neighborhood street, residential street. And on somebody's front lawn is a full three-piece band. <laughs> they hired... What? They hired... The people who live there hired a three-piece band and called it a neighborhood music festival. And oh all of their neighbors were standing... You know, they block off the streets with their own cars, which is completely <laughs> illegal. Which is the kind of shit you can get away with in Roscoe Village, but try doing that in Englewood and see how long that little fiesta lasts. Try that. I would love to see in back of the yards neighborhood if a bunch of neighbors just blocked off a street with their cars. How how long that little party would last. But, you know, again, this is this is what uh, wealthy white people do. I talk about this. How they stand in the middle of the street with their open containers and their kids running around and they listen to bad folk music. And I keep thinking to when I own a house that I'm going to be faced with this dilemma. Because, <laughs> you know, you drive through Chicago in the summertime and every weekend there are these streets that are closed off. 
Yeah. Because people have a bounce house and they're grilling and they got a Sinatra impersonator or something or a DJ. They got face painting. You know, they do these whole block parties. And I know that I'm going I'm going to face this one day and and I do what Am I let me ask you. Am I the kind of guy to you that would be enthused to take part in a full day a full Saturday block party with my neighbors? I I think in I think if you know me even just a little bit, you know that that's not really my scene. And the day is going to come where some well-intentioned neighbor is going to show up at my door and be like, hey, how are you guys doing? So, um, you know, we do it every year. going to be the second weekend in August. We get a bounce house and we get, you know, we get lots of food from Costco and, you know, a bunch of white claws and some wine we get a, a root beer keg for the kids. And, uh, you know, we have a party, some fireworks, and it's usually about seven fifty a couple. So what do you say? Would you, would you, you guys, you guys, can we count on you? No. <laughs> no. And then I'm going to be looking out my window all day, trying to wait until the neighbors are not in front of my house so I can leave without them seeing me. Because they're all going to be talking about me the whole day, and how I'm a terrible neighbor. Listen, I didn't have a bounce house growing up. These kids have bounce houses every weekend. If I had one bounce house in my life, that's that's more than I can even remember. And I could hear you right now. You're saying, well, just because you had it a certain way means these kids can't have it any better. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I want them to suffer as much as I did. A bounce house. My father had to save up three weeks to take us to Discovery Zone to get in a bounce house when I was a kid. These kids are getting bounce houses in their front yard every weekend. It's not right. It's not Christian is what it is. I don't believe in it whatsoever. I would I would take that. I would take that over the, the symphony, though, on the front yard, I think. I think... There's a, I, this started happening in the beginning of the pandemic. Way too many people playing their music in public. I really don't think you should just be able to sh- set up shop anywhere you want and just start playing music and force people to listen to your talent. It's, it's not right. I don't go up to people when they're, when, you know, when they're eating outside and just start doing my act. I don't do that. And I'm a lot better at my act than a lot of these people are at the guitar. I can tell you that right now. I'd be a lot more entertaining than some, some burnt-out folk singer. People just picking up a guitar play. It's on their front steps. I, I, I walked the dog through a neighborhood. These people just doing impromptu concerts on their front steps. Nobody wants to hear you. Stop subjecting people to your mediocre talent. What are you doing? How much worse do you think it is in the suburbs? I, I, hey, I got, got, the wife of, got the wife of vaccine. We had to go out to uh, Hinsdale. You ever mm. been to Hinsdale? Um, yes, I have. I've never been to Hinsdale. You know, I don't make it out to a lot of suburbs. For those of you outside of Chicago, Hinsdale is uh, about 25 miles outside of, of Chicago. It's, yeah. a, it's a little bit of a wealthy, little wealthy bit. area. Yeah. Uh, lots, of, lots of big houses. Yeah. But uh, we went out there. We got her her vaccine. That's where they had the one she, she wanted. And we're driving there. And I'm like, this is a delightful little suburb. They had a historic downtown. They had like a Starbucks that wasn't in a Starbucks building. It was like an old building that was retrofitted to be a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And they had all sorts of nice little shops and a little train station. And I'm thinking, this is just a delightful little area. I could almost see myself living in here. And then... We waited online for 45 minutes to get the vaccine, and I saw a good cross-section of what suburban life is like. And I said, I would rather throw myself in front of that train than move to the suburbs. Because suburban people with money are a different ilk than city people with money. There's just something like... like. City people you get, when you go to the suburbs and these people have money, you're like, something's not this. There's just something a little Beverly Hillbillies about it, right? 
Like in the city, at least there's a little bit, there seems to be like a little shine to their, to their entitlement, right? You go to the burbs, it's like, am I in Kentucky or the suburbs? <laughs> All these hillbillies got money. And I'm not saying those, it could have been people from other suburbs. It could have been, and I'm not saying it was people from Hinsdale. Like I said, your town is delightful. It's a delightful town. I really enjoyed my time there. But boy, it is it is different out there. I don't I don't know. I just my whole life is just a it, every day I live in perpetual annoyance just all the time. <laughs> Little things. I in my head though, this is this is how everybody is. In my head everybody is this annoyed all the time. Do you get annoyed? Do you get annoyed nearly as much as I do? <laughs> Often. You do? Yeah. All right. Yes. So do you think it's just this is what I'm attracting in my life that the reason I said, oh, James would be a good guy to work with because <laughs> he despises humanity as much as I do. <laughs> or do you think... I was reading a good a, a blog post today. I forget where I read it, but they were talking about like this astrophysicist was saying that like in the next decade, we should be able to make contact... Or, or, or be in the position to make uh, uh, contact with extraterrestrials. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was saying that that would be a terrible idea. Yep. Because, um, you know, we don't, we'd screw it up. We would screw it up. <laughs> yep. How long do you think it would take? <laughs> How long do you think it would take before they really got a, got a good look at us? And we're like, we either got to do two things. We either got to get as far away from these people as possible or blow up their planet. <laughs> One of those two things is going to happen. Because <laughs> generally, we're just a we're a planet of hillbillies. It doesn't matter. We're all just brute idiots. Could you imagine if this was the the first country they found? Could you imagine? Um, but you know, it it's always I'm I'm oftentimes reminded of. How, you know, we, we look at our country and we think of how, how hillbilly some of the things are in this country. Dude, sometimes you just, do you ever do just a scrolling of the news and see some of the things that are going on in other countries and be like, thank God our biggest problem is Coca-Cola and voting rights. Because, I'm, I mean, I just did a... a Three three stories, okay? People people in this country, you know, this whole COVID thing, people get get upset because uh because they're being told to follow rules, to wear masks, calling police Nazis. You know, that's a word that's really lost its meaning over the last year. <laughs> and it lost the and the word Nazi really just kind of been I really think we're forgetting the genesis of that word. And when, where it came from, that's, I'm hearing that too. There was a guy, there was a church in Canada where the cops came to do a check because somebody said they weren't following COVID protocols and the pastor's calling them Nazis. I'm like, okay, let's, let's come. I saw one video. It was, uh, they were on a plane and this Hasidic family got escorted off because they wouldn't wear masks. And somebody yelled out as a Hasidic family was being escorted off a plane that this is like Nazi Germany. Oh I'm like, okay, God. we got to know the audience a little bit. Oh. Know your history just a little bit. In the Philippines, some guy got caught breaking curfew because they, they're, you know, it's like uh, they got everything stamped down there trying to control this thing. The, the president there is telling them just to shoot people if they're out. <laughs> He's like, yeah, if anybody's out, just shoot them. And some guy's out getting water, and they stop him and make him do 300 squats. The guy goes home. He couldn't walk the next day. The guy died. He died. Now, he probably had some underlying things. I don't think squats normally kill you. But I'm just saying, think of this poor guy. Next time you're calling a cop a Nazi for making you wear a mask... I mean, this is what's out there. This is what's outside of these borders. Some some ship gets stuck in the Suez Canal. Automatically, they're blaming a woman. 
They blamed it. They just doctored this story. Like, yep, this is what happens when you let ladies ladies drive ships. Oh my God. Some Arab newspaper. She wasn't even on the boat. She was on a boat hundreds of miles away. <laughs> some publication doctored. You want to talk about the patriarchy? They photoshopped a picture of the lady on the boat and said she she caused billions of dollars worth of worth of shipping costs just because she's a lady. Which makes sense. Right. I mean, first we let them drive. Now we're letting them in boats. What do you expect is going to happen, James? That's what you were saying earlier. Okay. All right. Not what I would say. That's what you would say. <laughs> yep. Then I'm reading about the Jordan royal family. You know, we're all we're all hopped up about Harry and Meghan and how they were treated. Meanwhile, in Jordan. The prince is under house arrest because he was trying to overthrow the king. <laughs> like, that's a real royal scandal. We're talking about Meghan Markle and Piers Morgan. This guy was trying to lead a coup. <laughs> this is, do you understand? This is what's happening outside of this country. Sure, we've got a lot of problems in this country. You know... But when I, I look at stories like this, and I think of Trump tweeting 15 times in a row at 2 in the morning, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. You almost miss it. I will tell you, have you, uh, I know you've probably given up Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines. I, I have, yes. Yes. Major League Baseball is... Moving the All-Star game out of Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, to Coors Field, which is named after a beer, which has <laughs> probably contributed to a lot more lives being destroyed than, it, than Atlanta's, than Georgia's voting measure. You know, Coors is, is that's usually the uh, alcoholic's beer of choice. A lot, lot of stepdads punching holes in walls because of Coors Light, but nobody wants to talk about that. We're going to move to Coors Field. You remember Coors? That beer that your little league coach used to drink a 12-pack of during a game before he got escorted out of the complex for berating a 14-year-old ump? You remember Coors Light, right? You remember that. We've decided that that we don't want to do business with the state of Georgia anymore. And we want to go to Coors Field. The silver bullet. The old... So you remember that, that beer that you drank way too much of in, in Cancun when you were in, <laughs> in college when you ended up passed out in a hotel lobby toilet for seven hours and... That's it. In no way whatsoever an autobiographical tale, James. That didn't happen to me. <laughs> Sounded very nonspecific, yeah. It was completely nonspecific, James. Sure. You're, you're going to have to tell us all what happened, though. No, I, you know, it was the, uh, what, I was 20, 22 years old. Yeah. And it was the third day of spring break. And one of my buddies complained that I hadn't gotten drunk enough yet on, on spring break, which I had. I'd gotten adequately drunk. But I decided, all right, I'm going to show this guy for saying that I've not gotten adequately drunk. <laughs> and I drank more than any human being should drink. And after I was done, I went up to the all-you-can-eat buffet and just loaded up with fried food. And then about 20 minutes later, I decided I'm going to die. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the bathroom in the hotel lobby. And as things were projecting from every orifice of my body, <laughs> right. I dozed off. And the next thing I know, I woke up and it was nighttime. <laughs> Nobody came to check on me. All my friends just assumed that I'd gone and done something sensible. And that sensible thing was pass out in a hotel lobby bathroom in a foreign country. And then I called my parents to tell them what had happened, which every parent wants to hear. 
They want to hear about their 22-year-old getting alcohol poisoning 1,200 miles away (laughs) in a country with the most corrupt police force (laughs) in the world. That's what every parent dreams of. That's what they dream of. And I'm still half in the bag like, I'm fine. It's good. I threw up. I'm going to be fine. I just, you know, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that this whole voting suppression, this voting law, whatever you want to call it, I'm just glad to see it's being handled maturely. That's, that's what I am happiest to see. I'm, I'm happy that there's meaningful dialogue, right? Nobody's going out there and saying, you know, we don't want Coke products in our office anymore. Oh, wait, they are. They're saying that. They're they're they don't want Coke in there. They're moving moving baseball games out of states. They're I what are they gonna do at this point? They're not gonna repeal the law. They're not gonna repeal the law. And now you're just taking all that money away from people in Atlanta, from people in Georgia. But all these dopey these these parlor parlor games. Governor of Texas is like, I'm not gonna throw out the first pitch at the Rangers game now. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody's there to see you. <laughs> You know, upon further upon further reflection, I don't think it's right for... Okay, nobody cares. Get a local radio DJ. People would be just as happy with that guy. This is the guy, this, this, uh, this Governor Abbott. You know, they got this... They got this border crisis happening at the, at the southern border. All these people are, you know, are flowing into the thing, into the country. And he, he uh, got in touch with... Kamala Harris, because I guess she's the one who's like the uh, the border czar. They're calling her, hmm. and he and and to to make his point known to her, he wrote a letter. Do you see politicians do this a lot? They write letters. Doesn't that seem like not a very efficient way to get your point across to somebody in a timely manner? I've never, I've never said, you know what? I really got to get something off my chest. Honey, get me my inkwell and my quill pen and my parchment paper. I, I need to, to, to fashion a letter. If you have some, it, it's got to be all symbolic, right? Because if I have something important to say, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm, I'm definitely not going to leave it in the hands of the U.S. Postal Service in no way, shape, or form. Am I going to do that? Who's writing letters? People still do this. They deliver letters. They do this all the time on Capitol Hill. Email gets there way quicker. Do you know this? Do you know that people don't... They don't send letters anymore. It's not a... Pen pals kind of went out a long... Long time ago. Do you do you do you ride a stagecoach around town? Do you? What else are we doing? Are we are we hanging out our clothes on a clothesline to dry every morning? Are we? You wash your dishes in the basin? Is that what you do? Go out to the well, get yourself some some potable drinking water. What are we living like this is the Wild West for? I know it's Texas, but for the love of God. There is an urgent matter I need to attend to. Get me my letter-writing instruments. With every day that passes, thousands more migrants seep into this country. (laughs) I need to get correspondence to the vice president in four to seven days. <laughs> Driving me crazy. I'm going to write a letter. I don't even remember the last time. I, I don't even remember the last time I wrote more than a two paragraph email. <laughs> this guy's out here writing letters. How much could he have written? He's trying to he's trying to address the border crisis in a one sheet because nobody's reading more than one sheet, Governor. <laughs> you put more than one page in that letter, that's going right in the trash. 
Who do you trust it with? You trust with UPS, FedEx? What do you do? What did he do? Um, I got. Uh, did you know name shaming Karens is a thing now? What? Did you know this is a thing? Karens are really upset. Are they? Yeah, mm. it's a new thing. Name shaming is a thing. Great. I I sent a tweet the other day mentioning Karens, and uh, I was <laughs> I was attacked by a number of women with the actual name Karen. And I mean, listen, I feel for them, right? It's got to suck being named Karen. And you're not going to see a kid named Karen for a good 30 years. But uh, some some shit you're just stuck with. There's there's no, I I can't, I'm not apologizing because your name is Karen. I tweeted it out. Just people retweeting me, asshole. I was like, oh, sorry. And then somebody was like, oh, I think he meant to say the Pats. I'm like, ouch, that hurt. <laughs> you got me. They just kept going on and on. I had to mute the conversation. I can't keep track of, yeah. of what's... Listen, it's comedy. Somebody's got to get hurt. <laughs> it's just the rule. <laughs> It's comedy. Somebody has to get hurt. There's nobody. There's never nobody getting hurt in comedy. Whether it's I'm making fun of somebody else, or I'm making fun of myself, or I'm make somebody's getting made fun of. Yeah. Somebody gets hurt, and right now is your moment, Karens. And we can't put shame. We can't put shaming on 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 your name shaming me, your fat shaming me, your your mind shaming me. No. Not everything is shaming. Mm. Some shit you just have to take. That's all. <laughs> now, is that easy for me to say? Because I'm not in one of the groups right now that's being shamed? Yes. Yes. But I can't do anything about that. I I just work with what I'm given. That's all. Right now, I've been given the name Karen to, to, to make fun of. It's a lovely name. That's I don't have anything against the name. I didn't. I didn't come up with this with this term. I didn't. I, you know, I didn't start calling people Karens and Kevins. Don't blame me. Yes, I'm going to continually perpetuate it, but don't blame me. I didn't start this movement. What am I supposed to do? That does have to suck, though. I mean, I do feel for them. I don't feel for them enough to stop saying it, but I do feel for them. Because you know, everything right now, you go to a restaurant, everything is pick up and they yell out your name. Yeah. You just know every time that woman goes to pick up like tacos or something and they're like, Karen, Karen. And she probably doesn't want to answer at first. She probably wants to wait till everybody's head goes back into their phones and then just saunter up. Are you Karen? Ah, oh, God, yes. You can't introduce yourself to anybody without them making a crack. You're not, but you're not one of those Karens, are you? You're not one of the. You're a good Karen. Nobody's swiping. What's what's the direction they swipe if they like, like you? Right? right? Nobody nobody's swiping right on you. Oh God. So I get it, but I also don't. It's gonna pass. It's going to pass. They'll move on to a new name. Karen's will go away. If you don't like it, just start talking some sense into 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 all your friends cuz they're the ones who are who are making it bad for you. Get off TikTok. I don't know what to tell you. You know I'm noticing on TikTok? What? Found a lot of found a lot of uh pages this week. The people do them. There's a couple of big uh TikTok stars where these people do them. With their grandmas. Mm. That's a... Uh, that's really hoping to cash in pretty quickly, isn't it? That's that's not a business plan with great long-term prospects. <laughs> right? It's like these people who are trying to get rich doing, doing pages off their dogs. I'm like, oh, that dog looks like he's about seven. You better... You better, you better get to five million followers real quick. <laughs> you better, 
You better get that that merch deal real quick. And they're good. It's good content. Like there's this one kid. He does it with his grandma. And the grandma's got a lot of spunk. But the grandma looks like uh, uh, who's the Estelle Getty from the Golden Girls. I'm like, oof. <laughs> I hope you got a. I hope you got a ten. I hope that you don't have a ten year plan for this thing because <laughs> you better. You better. You better get in and out and make your money real fast. Because this is where I come from. Like I'm always thinking of of the worst case scenario. And maybe she doesn't. Maybe she lives another ten years, right? But what if she starts to decline a little bit? And she wants us to keep doing these videos, and you're like, yeah, you know what, Graham? I think, uh, I think, we're, no, I want to do the talk. Let's do, ah. Or if she gets sick, and then you're sitting there thinking, yeah, okay, I know she's got this this diagnosis, but she's fine now. We can still do these TikToks. It just brings up a lot of moral dilemmas, and there's a real shelf life on it. What are you shaking your head for? You know I'm making perfect sense. <laughs> You know I'm making perfect sense. There's a very, it's a very finite business plan. There, there's not, this is not a business you're going to pass down to the next generation. If you have a dog, then every time you get a new dog, people know they see right through that. You're just trying to keep the business going. You're already thinking past this, this dog that started it all. How do you think he's feeling right now? He thinks he thinks you, you got him a little brother for companionship. No, you just wanted to keep this little corporation going. You don't think I see through you? <laughs> Doing a TikTok with Grandma. That's it's a uh, it's a risk, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Granny. <laughs> He's got these, and they always incorporate the. That's the other mistake they make is they incorporate the grandma's name into the handle, Toddy and Granny. <laughs> Someday, she's gonna be Toddy. <laughs> People are gonna be like, well, "I don't care about Toddy," because you built your whole identity on Granny. If they have a way to to grow off, if they have a way to grow the business past the inevitable. I support it. This is just me. This is a guy who's been around for a while. Just try to impart some knowledge on the youth. You got to have more more tricks in your bag other than grandma. You look uncomfortable. Are you uncomfortable? It's very are you sad. thinking about your are this you thinking about your own grandma yes, right now? Of course. Or you're like shit. Shit, I was going to do that. I was about to call Nana. You know, my Nana's got some spunk. She every time every time we talk, we've got a good rapport. We've got great chemistry. I was thinking of putting I was thinking of doing a podcast with Nana. Don't do it. You know how long it takes a podcast to get popular? You're going to hit that zenith and then guess what? <laughs> You can be looking to find another grandma. Oh <laughs> well, most of us have to. So. Well, I hope the other one is younger. Ah, <laughs> uh, old people love casinos. And uh, is it just me, or is everybody gambling now? Is it is it just me, or is it everybody's gambling? I had no idea. I can't go. Three blocks without seeing a billboard with some scantily clad woman asking me, or the guys from Barstool asking me to gamble. <laughs> right. I don't know. Are there that? I didn't realize. I seriously underestimated how many degenerates there are in our society. I really did. I had no idea that so many people loved just burning their money. I had no idea. That this was such a, a a pastime of people. I don't do it. The most I'll do, I'll put ten bucks in an office pool. I'll spend fifty bucks to play fantasy football. That's it. These people are passionate about it. And on the one hand, I say God love them because there's really nothing I'm that passionate about. So God bless you 
if you have found something that makes you that happy. But I, I completely, completely undershot how passionate, how they get into it, how it's a science, how they're betting overs and unders, and I don't even know what else. Trifectas? Is that a horse racing thing? I don't know. Gambling to me is like I'm gonna I'm gonna transfer from an IRA to a Roth IRA. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna lock in a 10-1 arm. I'm so boring when it comes to my <laughs> to my money. You're out there buying Bitcoin and GameStop. I'm looking and at it right now. You're still in the GameStop? Is that still a thing? You better believe it. it. It went up again, right? Yeah. Uh, and what's the end game with this? Are you trying to make money or are you just trying to prove a point like this is V for Vendetta? I mean, what's what's the end game? I mean, we already proved our point. Now yeah, I, I get that, but a, but a lot a lot of people were like, we're gonna hold, we're gonna hold, and they lost their asses. Yep. I just don't think you should be making those kinds of <laughs> buck the system decisions. When you live in a 300 square foot studio apartment or your parents' house, I think you should really exercise. Like, I get it. I get not wanting to sell out and stick it to the man, but it's a it's let me ju, ju, it's a lot easier on your life if you stick it to the man with air conditioning. That's all I'm saying. Are you making any money off the GameStop? Yeah. Oh yeah. To be honest, it's just you and me and, and a thousand other a thousand people. Thousand people. Yeah. No. I'm. Yeah. I'm doing all right. I'm doing pretty good. What's all right? <laughs> I, I want to know for all the passion people are sh- if you haven't made eight million dollars i don't want to hear you talk about gamestop <laughs> ever again all right that i'm not doing great you still doing the bitcoin too like, the doja coin absolutely not dogecoin i'm for sure what's doja coin uh, it's break down doja coin <laughs> and bitcoin dogecoin Doge oh, coin. It's Doge. It's Doge. Is it Doja? Doge coin or Doge coin or whatever you want to call Doggy it. Doge coin. But it was made. Doge coin is a joke. It was a joke <laughs> cryptocurrency made to make fun of cryptocurrency. Um, Bitcoin is as real as anything. But hasn't the Bitcoin ship sailed? Isn't it too late no, to get on the Bitcoin? Absolutely. You know, I'm not a financial advisor, by the way. Don't no, listen to me. You're I'm not. an idiot. Let's, Please you know, don't let's, listen to I, me. I, I, listen. The, the, you're you're doing this for me. I think anybody listening to this is pretty sure that you're not a financial yeah, advisor. Right, right, right. No, Bitcoin is is uh, is a. I think it's a sure thing, and we are just now seeing what it can do for technology and for security. Mm-hmm. And fifty eight thousand dollars a coin is a very low number, and I think it's got. Quite is that what it is right now? Fifty eight thousand for one 143. Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And how many bitcoins does he? What do you buy? Like half a bitcoin, a quarter of a bitcoin? You can buy is that how one it works? one millionth of a bitcoin if you want. Yeah. It sounds very confusing to me. You put ten bucks in, you own some bitcoin. Would you like to hear about my fidelity mutual funds? I, I would love. I can't to- wait. <laughs> Well, it's a diversified portfolio, Gross. James. You know, it's it's a it's a moderately aggressive strategy at this point in my life. I think that's the smart play for me. Good. I think as I get older, I'll, I'll you know I'll get a little less aggressive and probably you know downgrade to more mutual funds and 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 blue chippers. But right now, you know, right now we're getting a little aggressive. We'll do some short term stuff, make some trades, and it's a it's a nice solid. You know, four or five percent growth, and uh, you know, at this rate, I'll if I want, I could stop working at eighty-two years old, and I, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, that's just the way we do things. I got a four hundred one k that my company matches at 05 percent, so that's really, <laughs> really just growing. Here's another thing I have a problem with. So another another establishment. We talked a while back. There was this gym that got linked to all of these COVID cases in Illinois, and they wouldn't say the gym that got linked to it where it started. Now there's an Illinois bar linked to 46 COVID cases. They did their grand opening, and it's in the it was in the burbs, in the rural burbs, which is an absolute shock to nobody. And how, how are they not telling us where to avoid. 
Isn't that insane that they know 46 <laughs> cases came from this one place? It would be like if you got a notice in your mail one day and they said, hey, just want to let you and your kids know that a registered sex offender moved down the block. We're not going to tell you who, though. <laughs> We're going to let you guys figure this out. How are they not telling us? Is there a law that you can't say where 46? How does that happen? Hey, going to let you know uh, a guy just got released on appeal for a triple murder conviction. He's in your general vicinity, but we're not going to tell you who it is. Shouldn't that be public knowledge? I think that should be public knowledge. Yeah. I find out when any of my colleagues in the news business buy a house. It's all over the newspapers. They're telling me how many bathrooms these people have, that they got limestone. It, that That's not it. There's no privacy against that. I got to know how many bathrooms the news anchor at Channel 7 has in his palatial estate in Hinsdale, but I can't know which, which podunk biker bar led to... Not that I'm going to be going there, but I can't know which bar led to 46 cases of COVID? What kind of world is this? How are you just going to say a bar got linked to 46 cases and not say where? I could probably narrow it down to, to three or four towns that I think would would be a safe bet. Yeah. It probably wouldn't take me too long to figure it out. But I want to talk about one last thing before we go, James. And and you know, you know my feeling about the biggest existential threat facing our society right now, uh, the biggest danger. To the, to the average American, hmm. I'm not talking about COVID, I'm not talking about gun violence. I'm talking, of course, about gender reveal parties. Gender reveal parties have claimed the lives of two more people, James. <laughs> of two more people at a resort in Cancun, Mexico. A plane involved in a gender reveal stunt crashed, killing two people oh on board. The article reminds us that in February, a man in New York was killed when a device he was building for his baby's gender reveal party exploded. Or a soon-to-be grandmother died when a gender reveal device exploded and sent shrapnel through her. And also in 2019, a plane crashed during a gender reveal party. I, I don't know how many times I have to appeal to our lawmakers <laughs> to finally do something about this. Because this is going to land on your doorstep one day. And it's not even going to be your family that's doing the gender reveal. You're just going to be out going to work one day in a in a in a plane is going to crash into you cuz it went out of control <laughs> dumping pink powder into a reservoir. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You're going to be minding your own business, having a having a picnic and and some base jumper with a with a pink parachute is going to come crashing into you. And kill everybody at your picnic. Is that what you want? Because this is where we're headed. This is where we're headed. Again, this is what people who've really not accomplished a whole hell of a lot else do <laughs> to seem important. Do you notice that when they do these gender reveal parties, it's never like, you know, a... Uh, when they do these gender reveal parties, it, it's never like a like a thoracic surgeon who's doing one and his wife, right? Because right. that's the kind of guy who's done enough in his life or lady who's done enough that they're accomplished enough that they don't have to get attention with the gender reveal party. <laughs> yeah, You're not seeing like a lot of city planners and architects and engineers spending three weeks planning for a gender reveal party. You'll see like athletes and celebrities do this because that's all they all got to do for their social media. 
But nobody, nobody successful does this. Nobody who's achieved a modicum of success in their life does these. And that's why you get these people putting up airplanes in the sky, crashing into people to announce the birth of their child. My brother-in-law and his wife are expecting a baby, and I don't know if they listen to this podcast. I don't know if they're planning a gender reveal party, but I'll tell them right now that if they are, they're dead to me. And I'm not going to stand by. You know, sometimes in life, you got to take a stand for what's right. During the Civil War, families were divided, brother against brother. And I'm not saying this is as important as important an issue, but I'm not saying it's not as important. That's all. Because if this keeps going the way it's going, I'm going to have to take a stand at some point. And if that means tearing my family apart, then, then that's what I'll do. But But somebody has to take a stand on this. Um, I am excited. James and I did another, uh, another virtual show. We did. At the Laugh Factory. What day was that? Oh, it was God. last week, we, last yeah, Friday. Something like that. And, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that I will be, I will be, uh, getting back out there. Month of May, I will be at the Laugh Factory just about every weekend in May. I'll be, uh, headlining Zanies. In Rosemont, the first weekend of June, I'll be out in Kenosha, uh, the 24th or the 25th, whatever weekend that is, and probably bouncing around at the Laugh Factory. Going to try and make sure I get there on on a, a night that James is recording for somebody else, so I can figure out a night when somebody else is paying him to be there, and then I can just be like, hey, I'm going to throw you 50 bucks to just dump that on Google Drive for me. James is like, all right, I guess I can do that. And um, <laughs> hopefully he'll give me a heads up of when he's going to be there. Just ask me. Okay. No, nah, well, well, then I got to pay you to be there the whole night. I'm going to wait until... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until some lesser comic is paying you and just hop on that bandwagon. Right? Hey, man. Listen. Do what you got. I didn't get to where I am because I'm a dummy. <laughs> smart not hard right work smart not hard you're damn right i got people i work with you know they walk out of the building our show ends at 10 o'clock they're out the door at 1001 and i'm like would you look at these people you know what the truth is you know what the truth is i'm the dummy i'm the dummy i'm the one who's working hard every day when i'm 90 i'm like what the hell these people are gonna have the time of their lives taking vacations to Costa Rica, whatever they're doing. I don't know. They get all this time on their hands. What am I doing? I'm working all the time, working weekends, doing this bullshit every week. Got to hustle, baby. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm done. I don't want to hustle anymore. Don't you get the, don't you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to hustle to make my life easier. That's what hustle should be. Hustle shouldn't be like hustle, work hard. It should be hustle, like tricking people. That's what I need to do. I need to hustle people like the color of money. Like Paul Newman, like the hustler. You'll learn. You'll get there. You'll get there. Uh, listen, everybody, don't forget uh, to to review the podcast at, at Apple, on Spotify, wherever else you can review it. Make sure you subscribe. Leave some ratings for us and reviews. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pat Tomasulo comedy. It would be nice if you watched this because uh, I spent a lot of money on the backdrop, and uh, and it would be nice. It would it would really be nice. And um, that's all I got today. That's all I got today. I got to go and making steak for dinner. It's gonna be fun. It's back day. I'm gonna do a little working out with my exercise bands because that's what I've been. That's what I've been relegated to. I use exercise bands anyway. Next time you see me, I'm gonna be like twice the size. I'm gonna be so huge. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week.